All right, everybody, this is Ross. So in today's video, I have some fantastic information I want to share with you guys today regarding uh, the varietal characteristics or even specific varieties of figs that I'm going to recommend to you guys if you're living in a very tropical climate. And um, we've done videos now in the past, particularly we focus a lot on my climate here in the Philadelphia area what are the recommendations I have for this area. Also, we've done videos about growing figs in the desert or in California, if you have the wasp. This uh, video, as I said, is really gonna focus on the tropics. I don't think we've ever done something like this. We've been learning quite a bit over the last uh, four or five years on this particular topic. And I've also, I've gained a little bit of experience myself. Um, not that I live in the tropics, but my grandfather, I've given him a fig tree, and I've also been observing his prior fig trees. We originally got him a Desert King, and he lives in a very sandy place uh, right off the intercoastal at, at Boca Raton, Florida, which is in southern Florida. It's uh, quite tropical there, or at least um, maybe not tropical, but uh, really on that edge of being in a tropical place. And he has not really had very good success at all uh, with his Desert King tree. And I've realized it's probably because of the soil. He just has a lot of uh, root knot nematodes in the soil. So what I did was uh, after researching root knot nematodes in Ficus carica and Ficus palmata and even the hybrids between them both, I have discovered that LSU purple would be a very fa uh, fantastic variety for him to grow um, in his sandy soil. Um, really doesn't have the greatest conditions, to be honest with you. But he's making do with what he's got, and he's trying his, his best. Um, since we planted it, uh, I think it's now been, I think now this is, might be its second year. Um, it may be two years old now, if I'm not mistaken. But since it's been planted, it fruited last year, and it's continuing to grow without any issues. So um, as LSU has stated, and I've talked about a lot in this particular video here, we talked about root knot nematodes and how um, all this relates to ficus carica and really the challenges and the way to overcome it. And I don't know for sure if LSU purple is going to succeed in the long run, but I highly, highly recommend it as a rootstock. Um, I do recommend that you guys get yourself either a ficus palmata hybrid or ficus palmata or a resistant uh, variety within ficus carica like LSU purple, plant those trees. So this video is gonna be about really, mostly the varieties that I'm recommending and the criteria for those varieties for dealing really with the rain. But I'm gonna give you guys in the beginning here some ideas, really solid uh, advice that I have in regards to actually growing them in a tropical place. Some Just some observations that I've uh, made over the years. Now, again, I don't have a whole lot of experience. So if you're interested in, you know, learning about growing figs in the tropics and really how to do that, this is kind of not really the video for you. But I think these are some really solid tips that I'm going to give you guys um, in this early section here of this video. So um, not only, I guess, is, you know, planting yourself a root knot nematode resistant rootstock a good idea but also you know it, it's probably a good idea to either plant the tree very deeply or above grade right the nematodes like to live i guess in the top i think it's a top foot of soil so if you can plant below that layer or even above that layer it's going to make a big difference in terms of getting your tree established to then eventually deal with the nematodes so my personal recommendation is one of two things. You can, uh, again, create a berm or a mound. Maybe it's uh, one to two feet in height. You plant the root ball uh, at the top of the berm. It gets established and then eventually is able to deal with the nematodes down below and actually penetrate through that layer and, uh, and deal with it. Um, the other thing you can do is dig yourself a very deep hole maybe uh, three to five feet in depth. Uh, grow out your fig tree to a single stem whip at about five feet in height. Plant the tree all the way down at the bottom of the hole. Cover it up, cover up the stem. 
and then make sure a little bit of the stem is poking through the top of the soil and then that way um, you actually get your tree very quickly established although in colder soil it's not going to necessarily matter too much for you guys in the tropics because it is quite warm um, down in the tropics so you know it, it's a great idea for getting your tree once again established so that eventually when it does grow into that um, that layer of soil with the nematodes within it's easy to uh, to deal with it so those are my tips right there you also you know add some compost organic material there's things like um, I forget what they're called but you can put them in the soil to actually kill or deal with the nematodes and there's also cover crops and things like that but Overall, just you know, throw on some um, some organic material every year. That's definitely going to be your best friend. Um, so that's that's a really big piece of advice. The other piece of advice I'd give you guys is if you can grow it, grow them under plastic. I certainly would, um, especially if you can really maintain the humidity underneath the plastic. I know it's a challenge, but it can be done. If there's a will, there's a way. There's people. Uh, commercial grower that's really well known growing figs in Malaysia in the tropics and he grows them all entirely under plastic and he gets great uh, fruit quality uh, he sells obviously commercially so um, he really knows what he's doing and obviously if you can grow under plastic even here um, I would highly recommend it in fact if you get about 25 more than 25 inches of rain annually I just would highly recommend trying to grow them under plastic um, yeah so that's my big tip now for this video this is going to be about you guys that can't grow under plastic and you're in the tropics and you got to deal with the rain and these are going to be some really solid strategies for that um, let's quickly just define what I would consider a tropical climate because maybe some of this doesn't apply to you guys but um, for me as an example I get about 40 inches of rain annually um, for anyone in, the, in and I would consider the tropics but maybe not a real technical classification of the tropics but how I would classify it in terms of figs is if you get about 50 inches of rain annually or more you're in quite a tropical place I would say I'm right on the edge of if I get a lot more rain than I do it's gonna be very difficult to grow figs and um, especially guys if that rain wherever you live happens all at once or a lot at once um, even light amounts of it spread out over time um, maybe you have a monsoon season maybe uh, a lot of this is ripening by the way during your figs ripening right the rain prior to the ripening process or or after the ripening process doesn't necessarily matter it's really all uh, it does matter to an extent because you want to keep the soil consistently moist not wet if our soils are consistently wet we're gonna have lower bricks lower fruit quality we're gonna have more splitting we're gonna have uh, you know less resistance to spoilage and fermentation and mold and all kinds of problems but the point is is that we really want to try to avoid a lot of this rain when exactly they're ripening so this is really key um, and I would say just about anybody, like I said, about 50 inches of rain or more annually. Maybe the majority of it is when your figs are ripening. Or let's say you only get you get five inches of rain or more, um, maybe six inches of rain or more per month. If you fall into those categories, this video really is for you. And the criteria I'm about to give you guys is for you. So for me, you know, I guess this is a good place to start because not that I live in a tropical place I would consider where I live humid temperate but certainly I get a lot of rain to have learned a lot about the rain and obviously to um, come up with some really great criteria for the varieties that do well here so you're kind of starting in the right place and um, this is my spreadsheet that I recommend that you guys check out in the description of the video there's a link that takes you right here to the top performing figs sheet within the spreadsheet and these are the varieties just very simply that I recommend that you grow here above all else above all else I'm sorry they are extremely rain resistant 
and deal uh, exceptionally well um, in the in humid climates. So this is again, like I said, a great starting point. And some of the things that I like to look for, as we did a blog post here on our blog, BigBoss.com, these are the three different characteristics that I really like to look for. And here's how this is going to relate to you guys, because these characteristics apply 100% to you as well, not just to me, but they're different. So here we go. Um, the first thing I look for is the ripening period and ripening succession. So ripening period is essentially just when the fig ripens. Um, obviously for you guys in the tropics, if you can get your figs to ripen, let's say before the monsoon season or after the monsoon season and avoid the rain completely, you're going to be way better off. You want to avoid the rain at all costs. Um, we'll get to that in a second as to why, but you know, as I said, like before or after, so you want either really heavy Breva producers that produce that first crop on last year's wood, or they produce a very early main crop or they produce a very late main crop. And some of the very early varieties that I recommend is in this category here, essentially anything that's mid or late is not gonna work for you. For somebody that let's say lives in Florida or Southern Florida, you have a monsoon, you have hurricanes, these varieties are gonna be a wash essentially. So you gotta get them either very early or you get them very late. Um, now, the uh, let's see here, the late variety that I recommend is De La Senora Hibernica, but there's a huge amount of very late varieties that you could look at. A lot of them in different climates and different languages, I'm sorry, different countries, they call them something to the effect of winter. So whatever winter means in their particular language, they usually have a fig called winter or something like that, that you could probably grow in your tropical climate that would really help you guys out. All right, so the, the second thing I look for here, guys, is actually the rain resistance, the split resistance, the cracking resistance, resistance to temperature swings, and then, of course, the superior drying capabilities. Uh, if the fig has the right shape, it's more of an oval, elongated, teardrop shape, it's going to have better split resistance. Um, it's probably not going to uh, really, uh, it's going to handle, I'm, I'm sorry, it's going to handle the, the rain a lot better than probably other varieties. So the shape's really important too, but above all else, I think probably is the drying capabilities because the drying capabilities, those figs, even here, can certainly dry on the tree throughout rain. I've really uh, certainly experienced that this year. Last year, um, really been experimenting as much as I can with that particular thing. Um, essentially, with those two varieties, Verdino del Nord and Ruggiola de Elba, you might even be able to throw uh, Rosalino in there perhaps. But those are probably your best bet. Uh, the first place that you guys might want to look if you're trying to find a fig that can withstand the rain. And here's my argument is that I probably would, instead of trying to withstand the rain and trying to ripen figs throughout the rain, I would maybe even consider just avoiding it at all costs, really set up your fig trees in, metabolically, also the techniques that you perform to avoid rain that you can, any rain that you can, to have them ripen at the right time. Uh, choose the right varieties that ripen at different times. Obviously, there's a lot of techniques and different things that you can get into to sort of avoid the rain. Now, the last thing here is probably your best bet. I would actually argue this is, in all honesty, the most important thing other than just ripening them at the right time. But you may be able to ripen uh, a fig during monsoon season if it has the right hang time. And what I mean is it has to have a very short hang time. Every variety has a particular number of days that they start to swell and turn color to the point in which they're perfectly ripe. So the amount of days that that takes before you would pick it is what I would give them a value of, right? So a lot of figs here, I'd say the average is maybe about seven-ish days. Uh, maybe eight days. It does depend on the time of the year. Obviously, the warmer it is, the shorter that number can be. But I have varieties that really range from some have a three-day hang time, some have a 15-day hang time. So um, knowing that 
and knowing that that's a, a process, uh, it's really important to pay attention to those varieties that have the shortest hang time possible. And a couple of them here that I can highly recommend, one is uh, LSU Champagne. Um, LSU Champagne is a type of Golden Celeste. So maybe even Golden Celeste would be something that you guys want to look at. There's different strains of it. There's at least four or five different strains. LSU Golden Celeste or LSU Champagne uh, was bred by LSU. And that was a, a fantastic choice for sure for anybody in your climate. Because essentially what, what happened um, is that usually on day one and day two of the hang time of that beginning stage of the swelling process, you're not really getting a whole lot of problems at that point. It's almost indestructible uh, as they are green and hard on the tree. The softer and softer they get, the more uh, impervious they are to rain. Um, is that the word? I don't know. But they're, the, the more susceptible they are to rain. So essentially what we want to look for then is a variety that, you know, even if, if it's going to be soft or relatively soft and then susceptible to the rain, you can still eat it and enjoy it. Uh, a lot of figs, when they're slightly soft, are still susceptible to the rain and can split, can get destroyed, but they still contain a lot of that sap within, and therefore they're not tasty uh, or have much sugar at all. So different varieties essentially develop these sugars at different rates. The sap goes away at different rates. They become soft at different rates. The quicker that all happens, the better off you are. So a variety like LSU Champagne, another variety like uh, Rasty's Persian Unknown, or it's called Iranian Candy now, that one is basically indestructible. I think, well, not indestructible, but it can be grown anywhere. Um, I did a video here actually titled, This Fig Can Be Grown Anywhere. And we talk about the uh, Rasty's Persian Unknown and my experiences with it. And essentially, uh, really that for a few reasons. One, the, the hang time is so short. Uh, it's really only three days. Also, the harvest window is very short, and it's extremely early. So this is probably your best bet, in my opinion, um, for getting that early season option. Getting something that will ripen before the rain. Even if it did ripen in the rain, I'd be very curious to see, because of its short hang time, how it did. But this is a, a really great option, I think, for people out there uh, that are interested. This one does ripen roughly 60 days after formation, so at about 550 growing degree days, which I looked here at um, Palm Beach County in Florida. You've already essentially almost gotten there. By the time of this, this video comes out, you're going to be at 550, and the figs should already be showing on your tree. Uh, and from the time they're being shown or the time that they're pinched, this particular variety, Iranian candy, um, can be grown uh, or can ripen within 60 to 65 days. So essentially that means if by, let's say, January 15th, we're getting that 550 growing degree days that we need um, in Florida on average, let's say, um, that means about 60 days later, two months later, you're looking at March 15th, you're going to have main crop figs, which is pretty darn incredible. Um, so that is well before, at least should be well before uh, hurricane season. And obviously that'd be a great um, opportunity and idea for you guys in these climates. Now, um, those are two varieties I recommend, LSU Champagne, both of them, uh, and Iranian candy, both of them are early. The last one here is quite late, as I've already kind of uh, recommended to you guys. It's called De La Senora Hibernenka. And this particular variety is, without a doubt, um, another one that has a very short hang time. And I would argue it's not as short, perhaps, as the others, but definitely on day three you can pick it. It's edible. It's not horrible. Day four, day five, day six, obviously it gets better and better. But I would say even on day four, it's really quite good. Um, it's a highly flavored fig. So certainly this could be a really great option for a lot of people out there who want something that tastes a bit better than LSU Champagne or 
Iranian candy because those are, you know, they're they're not the worst tasting figs, but they're not the best. And um, certainly this one here, De La Senora Hibernenka, is one of the best tasting figs I have. Um, so if you can get it at day six, you'll be in heaven. If not, um, I would definitely settle for day three. And that's the, that's the thing here, right? Is harvesting fruit that's not destroyed. I think that's really the key to this whole thing. Complaining about fruit quality, you're kind of growing figs in the wrong climate. So I don't know, but yeah, I think uh, those are probably my, my biggest recommendations here, guys, is pay attention to that hang time for sure. Ripen them, you know, outside of that big rainy period. And then also, if you're going to be growing them or ripening them within the time of the rain, then find something that has really superior drying uh, characteristics to it. Uh, but the first place I would look is definitely in that shorter hang time. And uh, unfortunately, I haven't found something that has this short hang time and also has drying capabilities. That would probably be the best fig in existence, um, whatever that is, for a human climate. Um, anyway, guys, uh, yeah, I hope you learned something here. I hope you got guys something out of this. You know, Check out the recommendations I said on the, the nematodes, growing them under plastic. Um, you know, whether you're going to plant them deeply or plant them in a berm. And uh, I hope that this will really, guys, help you on your quest here of finding a particular variety of fig that has the right characteristics for you. Um, if you found this video helpful, because this information was, of course, free, highly recommend you guys consider supporting me on Patreon. It's just patreon.com slash Ross Ratty. And, um, yeah, just hope that you guys are, are getting something out of this and of course i'm saving you some sort of money and therefore um you know it's worth the support on patreon so all right guys uh we'll see everybody soon all right see you for the next one hope everybody's staying safe happy and healthy take care everybody